This video is a process turtle diagram for the servicing process. The first step of any turtle diagram is to interview the process owner and identify what the process is and have them describe it. So the process in this case is servicing. And this is step one. And we're going to ask them to describe the process from the time the customer calls to complain about the broken item to the time we ship it back to them. All the things that occur there. Now, you might ask them to give a brief description of the process because you're going to cover the process in more detail as you go through the process turtle diagram and when you interview other people in the service department. But start out with a brief description of the process from the perspective of the process owner. Step one. Step two, with this, what is the trigger? What is the input to the servicing process? So this could be your RMA from the customer. This could be the call from the customer. This could be the bad product we're gonna ship to um, the company from the customer. Step three, we're gonna have outputs of the process. So this is gonna be good product we're going to have probably an invoice to the customer for the service. And we're probably going to have um, a service record. So any kind of service we do, we're going to have to document it because these are medical devices. Step four of the process, with what? So what? This is input. This is output. This is a description. This is with what, this is with who, this is how you do it, and these are the metrics. So step four, what do we need? We need a service department in a service area, maybe an ESD bench where we're going to do electrical testing. Maybe we're going to need um, measurement devices like a multimeter. Maybe we need a high pot tester. Maybe we need software to track all the service work that was done. Maybe to keep track of our hours for that. So the software, clause 4.1.6, that's the clause for validating software for the quality system, quality system tools. The high pot um, device and other measurement devices these are calibration 7.6. ESD, um, this is going to be work environment at 6.4. Um, and the infrastructure, the, um, the room or the area where you're going to do this, 6.3. You're going to have over here training, 6.2. You're going to want to know who the different titles are for different people, what their different jobs are, so you know who to interview for what activities. Over here, your call, 7.2, um, customer focus, and also uh, 8.2.1, um, I want to say 2 for complaint handling. I might have that clause wrong, but we're going off of memory. Servicing process in general, that's 7. Um, 5.4, I want to say. We'll cheat and we'll go back and look. 7.5.4. Okay. Now, how is this process done? The procedure is SYS013. The form, coincidentally, in this case, and it is just a coincidence, is form 13. And the log for service is list 13, also a coincidence. So Scott Lucky, I don't think any other procedures have that coincidence except maybe LST1, Form 1, and System 1. So those are the only ones that I can think of where the numbers match up. But this is your procedure, your form, and your log. Those are the three things the FDA is going to look for and most auditors are going to look for. And then the last part of the whole entire process are process metrics. So 8.5.5. or 8.2.5 would be process um, metrics. And what you're looking for is opportunities to improve the process. How long does it take? What things fail the most? Um, identifying when you might need to open up a CAPA. 
So this is your process turtle diagram that you create for every process. And you don't have to go in the order I did, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is step five out here. This is seven here. This is six. You don't have to go in that order. But by keeping it the same numbers in the same diagram and everything uh, drawn in the same location every single time, it makes it easier for you to remember the seven things that you're supposed to cover in a turtle diagram. And the more practice you get, the less it matters what order you go in. So if they give you the procedure first, you write that in first. If they show you a service record, you write that in first. If you have some service metrics from a manager, you put that in first. So whatever order you get the information, that's where you write it. But you got to need to know where to write it. And you need to start memorizing these clauses. Like over here, the procedure, we're going to get 4.2.4. Over here, records, 4.2.5. So you need to keep track of what clauses am I covering? Um, also, what um, what might this process lead to? Like I might audit training when I'm looking at who. I might be looking at um, over on the how it's going to be done. I look at the document control process, the record control process. Um, I might be looking at training matrices. When I look at metrics, I might be looking at mandatory review process. So you figure out. Um, what the linkages are between this process and all your other processes in the quality system. You also cover more clauses this way and you identify um, what pieces of the process need to improve based on the metrics and what things people have trouble telling you about. Um, if, if you're interviewing somebody and they don't really have the ability to describe that part of the process well, that might be an area for improvement or it's not well-defined or just not working consistently. So this gives you an overview of process uh, for servicing and how to draw a turtle diagram for the servicing procedure. I hope that helps you with doing your next thought of the servicing process. And we'll be doing some more of these um, turtle diagrams for other processes too. Have a great day, bye-bye.